This winter meal will include French lentil soup and sweet corn muffins. I will start by centering myself, relaxing into my inner center, offering myself as a channel to comfort and nurture others as I affirm into myself. I bless the food as I cook it, so it will bless, nurture, and comfort others. So I'll start by making the soup. This will be French lentil soup. And you can see here, these are the French lentils. And French lentils are high in protein and fiber, and they are low in fat. Among the lentil family, the blue-green lentils hold their shape well while cooking, but they take a little bit longer to cook than other lentils. They have a mild, earthy flavor. Before cooking it, you might want to make sure to sort them through, follow stones and other debris, and rinse them. You don't need to soak them, especially if you're using a pressure cooker. I would say if you're not using a pressure cooker, you might want to soak them for about four hours or even overnight. So I have my pressure cooker. This one is a big one because I'm going to add to it later. First, I'll cook the lentils and then I will add vegetables to it so it will fill up the pressure cooker. So here's the one cup rinsed lentils. We're using, I'm using four cups of water. Remembering that this is already a part of the soup. And bay leaves, two bay leaves. Close, align my pressure cooker, close it, seal. Turn it on, high heat, bring it to a boil, and simmer it for five minutes. That will be it. And then, while this is cooking, I will saute the different vegetables that will add into the pressure cooker. Again, close, seal, bring it to a boil, and simmer it for just a few minutes. So while the lentils are cooking, which came for full boil, and now there are about two minutes left for it to simmer, I will make the vegetables. And this is how I usually make dinner. Very simple. Cook the lentils or the, any other legume. And I will saute some onion, uh, celery, savoy cabbage, have kale, and yam. But let me prep the vegetable. This is how I do it, and you can see it. So I got here two stalks of celery, and I will cut them just in an angle. people use the leaves, some people don't. This is a little bit yellowish, so I think I'm going to set it aside. So here is the celery, and this soup will serve about four people. So we got our celery ready, and now we'll continue preparing. We have here the Russian kale, and this might be about two cups, but again, this is a very forgiving recipe and I like to first separate the stem from the from the leaves. Again this is actually this scale the stems are not very thick so this is really optional whether you want to separate it or not but I will, you can also fold it in half, 
and just cut it right like this. I missed a little bit at the bottom, put that here. Curly kale, you can do it with your hands. This will be a little harder to put, separate the leaves from the stem. Do you know what this is? I'm blessing the food as I cook it. This is our lentils done. I'm going to turn it off. Meanwhile, continue here. This is our stem. And if you have not tried the stem raw, you should, because it's very sweet. Okay, let me separate this here. Got that. Few more. I'll put this aside here because I will saute the stems with the onion and the celery. It gives it a nice flavor. Leave that aside. So I take the stems. You can do it all at once if you like. They're all cut well at the bottom. Or I'll do just do less. It will be easier to do. And I like to cut it in an angle. Reminds me of my husband. I taught him how to cook and the way he chopped. The stems, he is really good. So, just in an angle, adding a little bit more texture. The more we can eat all parts of the vegetables, we get more nutrients. No need to throw it out. But if you don't like the stems, you can keep them out. But you can boil them with water and use the water as a stock for soup. So don't feel guilty. Just step at a time, moving into a more nutritious food, nutritious meal. So here we are. So we have our celery. Got an onion, and let me do now the cabbage. So the, those leaves I will take off, it's a little bruised. Take them off, and I will cut this in half. And I would like to have about two cups of the, um, of the Savoy cabbage. I like Savoy cabbage because it adds a very nice flavor to soup. So I'll take the stem out. So the hard part. I can still use this. Okay. And cut it in half, just chopping it. It tends to shrink a lot, the cabbage, when it cooks. So, you don't have to mince it. All right. And I will measure, make sure. I might have a little extra here. I can save it for another dish. Do more than a little, more than two. So here we go. This is our added cabbage. And, well, I'm not going to add this for now. I'm just going to set them aside. So this is our start. And what I will do now, before chopping the vegetables, I will start by sauteing. I will start with adding the, 
about three tablespoons of sunflower oil. All right, lots of things here, but that's okay. Let me turn the light, the flame on. Okay. So let it heat. We'll add the onion with a little bit of Celtic salt. Meanwhile, let me now, let me do the yam. So I would like in the yam to have about two cups of, um, I will cut them to small uh, cubes. So I have a pillar here. Now sometimes when I bake yams, I don't peel it. I wash them well and I bake them with the peel, even eat the peel. But for this soup, we'll do it without the peel. So let me make sure you can see. Move here, it's a lot of things, but we can manage. Cut this in half. Okay, I will cut this in half and just cut to small. As you can see, it's about quarter round, quarter round, especially in the winter. It's nice to have sweet yams in the soup, very grounding. Let me measure. So we need, it's good I had another one. So let me peel that. more here. And cut this in half. Another half. Okay. Almost there. That's it. I think we're going to have, this has a little spot here. I think we have about two cups. I said this is a forgiving soup. So this is our, and this is ready, I'm sure. A little bit salt. For just a moment, move things here. Actually, I can put this right here, put it aside. Ooh. Right. So I will add the celery. Turn the heat down. A little bit more. Okay. And to that, we'll add the stems of the kale. Beautiful combo of greens. Let it be for a few minutes. And here we have our kale. I'm just going to move this here. 
don't need it now finished all is left is to cut the leaves of the kale okay so I'm going to take it all you can see it's a light little bunch here like that. Keep them all together. All right, so this is our kale. So I will just add now only the Savoy cabbage and I'm not going to saute the yam or the leaves of the kale. Turn the heat a little higher. can use any kind of you can use green cabbage instead or Napa cabbage again I will add a little bit of Celtic salt mix it and let the cabbage soften and I will add a little bit more oil I'm going to actually add some sesame oil, warming, nice flavor. Cabbage and oil go hand in hand. You can't go wrong when we do that. So, mix it all, beautiful mixtures of green, and then we'll add the orange, beautiful. So I don't saute it for very long, just that the cabbage will saute maybe about two or three minutes and I will turn it off. Once the, I can open the pressure cooker, I will add the vegetables, vegetable broth and the um, yam and the kale. So now the vegetables are ready. I can open the pressure cooker. The lentils are ready. I didn't cook them very much, five minutes. I can try now to dig, do you know what? There, here we are. One bay leaf, here's the other, coming up. So it will be easier to do it now than after you have everything in. This is the vegetable broth powder, two tablespoon. I found this is a good amount. Sauteed vegetables. See how beautiful it is? Beautiful greens. They add a lot of flavors. Onion and cabbage add a lot of flavor. Put that in. Four cups of water. Remember, we already had four. There will be another four. You can see why I need a big pot. So this soup, you can have some leftovers. You can add it the next. You can eat it the next day. Two cups of yams. Put it right here, and I usually put at the top. I just put the kale, so they kind of steam, and then. After the soup will be done, I will just mix it, fold it in. Here we go. Close. Let's see, just have to realign it in the right way. Seal.
this is the amazing thing. I will bring it to a boil and simmer it for three minutes. That will be it. When I can open the pressure cooker, I will just add two tablespoons of brag and then I taste it and to see if it needs more. And we're done. This is a wonderful and very simple dinner. And that's just part of it. And now I clean up and I will make the sweet corn muffins. So now the soup is still coming to a boil. Let me check. Still not boiling. Simmer it for three minutes. Meanwhile, I'll make the sweet corn muffins. Those are healthy muffins, but they taste great. And they are light, they don't have dairy, and they don't have sugar. So, in a large bowl, I'm going to take two eggs. They do have eggs, though. Okay. There we are. Take this away. Beat the eggs. This is my new one. Look at the color, I love it. So you beat the eggs. That's great. And now we will add to this a third cup of sunflower oil. You can, if you prefer to use butter, it's great. I'm just trying to make it more healthy. So otherwise you have to melt the butter and just add it. And what else we're adding? This is a third cup of agave. You can use maple syrup if you prefer. So, spoon. So this is our wet, wet ingredients. that away and move that aside let's work on our dry ingredients we will use one cup of yellow cornmeal one cup of whole wheat pastry flour and two teaspoons of baking powder okay so I'm just gonna go through the sifter I'm just using a strain strainer it makes it a little bit, those muffins are very light and sifting the flowers make, gives it a nice and smooth. Use this, that will help. It will have a beautiful golden color. Let me check right now. This came to a full boil. I will simmer it three minutes. Turn that down. And now I will continue with the sifting the flour. Starting with the corn. Add a little bit now. whole wheat. See how the colors mix together? So I will add the, we have the baking powder and the rest of it. I'll do it and then get back to you when I finish this. Okay, so now I sifted almost everything, but you can see this is less fine and it's not going through because this is a very fine strainer. So I, I have another strainer here that is less fine and I'll just put it right in here and just get the rest of it. Okay, 
Here we go. This is for, for, for those of us who don't have flour sifter. Okay, so it's your choice. You can put it in or leave it out. But if you like it a little bit more grainy, I think I'm gonna leave it out. I worked so hard on it. So put that aside. See how beautiful it is? Mix them together. We fold it now into the wet ingredients. That in. Just remember something. I didn't plan on telling you that, but when I teach meditation, there's a beautiful way to describe meditation. It has a technique and the art of it. And the technique are the dry ingredients. And the art of it is the wet ingredients. If you don't mix them together, you don't get those wonderful muffins or cake. And if you make the technique, if you use the technique in meditation, and then you open your heart at the same time, then it's a, a great blessings. If you just use techniques, then you feel dried. If you just become, just use the, the art or the openness of the heart, you can become too emotional. The mixture of the techniques and the openness of the heart, then you can have a deep meditation. So that's why we need both. We need techniques, but we need to be not mental, but with an open heart. So I will mix it, fold them both together. Not too much mixing. And now we have to add the two-third cup of rice milk. Mix it into that. The cornmeal, though it looks wet, absorb a lot of liquid. So let it sit for a moment. You will see how it will absorb it. But this is going to be a moist consistency. We'll leave that. And now let it sit for a moment. Here are our muffin tins. A little bit of oil. Just brush. Remembering to bless each muffin, people who feel nurtured by this meal. There we go. That will be also easier to clean and to, the muffins will come out very smoothly. Move that aside. Here we go. I will take a spoon and I will spoon it into each one. That will be a meditative project. It's nice to do it with a kid. So I will fill them all, each one. As I'm filling them, I will bless them with the love of my heart. And then we will bake them. So I'll just do a few. You don't have to fill that. 
it will probably will be filled about a third of the way or so. I will distribute all of them evenly. So I'll, I'll just start by filling them less than half. And then if I have extra, I will put it in. But don't have to worry, it will rise and you will have 12 muffins. So I'll finish doing it and then I'll show you the end result and then we'll bake them. Okay, so here we are. Here are 12 muffins. It, it's filled about halfway and to pour the batter in, use just a, a measuring cup. That was easy. I don't have a small ladle, so that was just fine. Okay, so here it is. I did preheat the oven to 350 degrees. I'll put them in and it will take about 20 minutes to be done. You can also check after 20 minutes to see if they are done if you want it a little bit more uh, brown, but usually it's fine. So let me put it in and I have something to tell you. Okay. Put it for 20 minutes. Let me get, here we are. Okay. This meal has a soup and the corn muffins. Usually I make a lighter meal in the evening. So my body has time to digest it before I go to bed. My husband and I both enjoy a lighter meal in the evening. It's really best to eat dinner about three hours before bedtime. The latest one should eat is about 6.30 if you are living a yogic lifestyle. This gives your body enough time to digest the food. So when you go to bed, you can sleep soundly. If you eat your meal and go to sleep soon after, you will be digesting it while sleeping, which will cause you not to sleep well and you can gain weight and you can wake up feeling tired. So let that finish and then serve the meal. So now we're ready to serve and are already taking the corn muffins out from the tins and it was really easy. So a nice gold moist corn muffins and you can have them with butter if you like uh, and honey on the side. And the soup is done. Open it. Looks great. Put that aside. Remember, we still have to add a two tablespoon, as I said, of brag. Mix that. This is a real winter, winter soup. And again, you can decide whether you want to, you taste it to your taste. If you like more salty, you add a little bit more. It smells wonderful. I'll put that aside. I'm not going to even taste it. I know I like it because I've done it before. Put that away. Serve it in a bowl. And it's usually better to put less than more in terms of salt. People can always add a little bit more later. So here is our hearty soup. This is our evening meal. And just a thought for you. Having muffins and a hearty soup is my comfort food. What is yours? Make sure that whatever your comfort food is, it's good for you. You can ask the food, can you comfort and nourish me? Can you relax and uplift my spirits? If the answer is yes, this is true comfort. Enjoy the meal. <laughs>